Okay, so this is gonna be my first top seven video, top five, top whatever. It's actually my, well, it's that's the thing. It's actually my brother's car, but I still consider it my car because this was actually my first car. But he drives it a lot more than me and he tuned it. So it's like, I don't know, once you kind of like start using your money to tune the car. So it's like, I consider it his, but I still kind of refer to it as our. Take it easy on me. Let me know if you enjoy it. And if I suck dick, let me know that too. But enjoy. Hey guys, so let's start with number seven. Number seven would have to be utilitarianism. Now, with the exception to weather, my GTI can pretty much handle anything. I've used it for my camera car to film reviews, I'm just kind of sit in the back uh, with the hatch open, and it works fine, it works perfectly, which makes for a killer shot. There's also enough room in the trunk for a good amount of stuff. Now, I know that's kind of vague, but take this for example. You can fit this ice chest in the back, and you could still put stuff you know, around it, in front of it, behind it. Uh, so it has a good amount of room in it. As car guys say, it's a grocery getter. You could definitely throw some groceries back there, gym bag, whatever you want. Although this is a two-door, it still seats four, and it seats four comfortably. I don't often have four people in this car, more or less even three. So not very many times people sit in the back, but the times that it does happen, there's always been plenty of room for people in the back, and I've never had an issue with leg room in the front or in the back, people having to compromise for anything. Number six would have to be the reliability. Now, I've had this car for a little over three and a half years, and I've had nearly just about, I've had no problems with this thing. Um, while the first three years releasing it, uh, we stuck with the continue, we stuck with the maintenance plan of you know, servicing the car every 10,000 miles, and that did us justice. Now, whenever we started tuning the car, whenever we were going APR stage one, stage two, then we went to 10,000 to 5,000 miles because that's what my tech, my tuner, and other guys in the Volkswagen community say they do. Now, it's also important to note that you should be doing supporting mods. So this car has an upgraded intercooler, an upgraded diverter valve, and it also has an upgraded turbo outlet pipe on top of having a cold air intake and a full exhaust. But we got those other things to help the car properly and reliably maintain the power and make sure nothing really screws up. Given that once you go stage two, even stage one, you're turning up the boost, the diverter valve can't take it, it's a lot more air going through the intercooler. So things like that are things you kind of have to upgrade. And we got the upgraded turbo outlet pipe is because we, once you're pushing more PSI, it's, hard for, it's harder for the stock outlet pipe to handle that. So supporting mods are a must. Do not overlook them or yeah, you will start running into problems. A number five would have to go to gas mileage. Stock, I mean, I'd average around 25, I'd average around 25, 26 MPGs, you know, going to and from school. That was, and that's just typically how it always was. Once we went stage one and stage two, it changed. And not because you're running more boost and not because, you know, something's mechanically different with the car. It's honestly because of, I knew I had more power to, like at my foot, at my disposal at any given time. So why the hell would you not use it at any given time? It's something that, it's kind of intoxicating, it's kind of a drug. You, as a car guy, you say you'll stop. It never, it never happens, ever. Look, the point is, gas mileage will suffer for a while just because you're a car guy. And you know you're gonna have more power at your foot and you're gonna use it. But for the most part, whenever you've restrained yourself, I've gotten the same amount of gas mileage that I did stock. I'll still average 25, 26 MPGs going to and from school. Nothing has changed. Number four, it's a sleeper. I quickly learned when I got this car, most people don't really think much of it in terms of, they don't think it's fast. Driving to and from school, running errands, going to work, or even cruising at night, most people don't mess with me. They don't roll up to the side of my car and you know, give me the, you know, give me the eyebrows, give me the wink. They don't come up with the, you know, typical cliche with their phone out ready, you know, to start racing. I don't ever get approached to race in this thing. Let's face it, most regular car people will look at the GTI as the upgraded or the higher spec of the Golf. You know, the salesman will try to pitch it as, hey, why don't you get a GTI instead of a Golf? What's the difference? Well, it's faster, it's sportier, and they'll go, all right, I'll get in that, and my friends won't think I'm as poor as I am. But every once in a while, I'll get a nod from a car guy, but I guarantee you, it, it's seldom. But on the bright side, any time that somebody thinks they can cut me off or that I can't overtake, I have the power to willingly and hilariously humiliate them. Number three has to go to the sound. Most 
there's four cylinders that sound kind of ricey and rappy. I, I don't know. I've never really liked the sound of four cylinders. Brands typically don't put that much effort and attention to making a four cylinder sound really good. Volkswagen was different, however. I love the way this car sounds. I love the way this car sounds for a four cylinder. It's not my favorite sound in the world. I love the way my R32 sounds levels more. This exhaust, for example, is a CTS turbo back exhaust. We've got the full exhaust, downpipe, midpipe, and turbo back. Sounds really good. It's not too loud though, but we like it like that because it, if you go too loud, it just, that's when you kind of fall into the ricey category, I think. But this car is loud enough to where you can hear it coming, you hear it whenever it passes you. It just has a really good tone and pitch to it, and my god, the, the DSG farts sound really good in it. Number two, the speed. Stock, the speed was pretty good. It was alright. I mean, zero to 60, you were looking at like 6.5, something like that. I never really paid attention to the zero to 60 times on this car, just because it's front wheel drive, you're, you're gonna get spin in first regardless. It's always gonna be tough to get an accurate zero to 60 time. Now, rolling, that's different. Stock, I realized that this car, it was really good in the low end, but it kind of struggled once it got past four or 5,000 RPMs, given that it has a small turbo. Upgrading this to stage two, it is much more linear and it, it climbs a lot better and stronger past four and 5,000 now. Whenever I was stock, whenever you go past 85, 90 is whenever you start to feel the car, it was just like, all right, come on, come on. Going stage two, that kind of disappears. The car doesn't really start to struggle or start to slow down until about like 120. For the most part, zipping around on the highway, passing people, getting up to getting up to 100, it's a breeze. Now, if you do want some numbers to go off of, we took this to the, to the drag strip and we were able to get stock we set a trot speed, God, I'm trying to remember, it was such a long time ago. If I'm not mistaken, we set a trot speed of 95 miles an hour, and I know the time was a 14.7. Stage two, on a quarter mile, 13.7, so that's a whole second faster. Rolling, whenever we did roll racing, I believe the roll was, it was from a 40 roll, the drag strip, set, the car set an 11.3, 11 11.2. 11 I think I actually have video of it. If I do, I'm gonna put it right here. That was that. Now, we were missing a couple of components there. We didn't have the upgraded intercooler. Number one, hands down, has to be the handling of this thing. I did not think I was gonna get a GTI. I was looking at an ST, I was even looking at a Mustang, I was looking at a couple of things. My brother recommended we look at a GTI, and I said, okay. I pull out of the dealership, as soon as I go on a U-turn under the bridge to get back onto the feeder and onto the highway, that's when I fell in love with the car. The steering felt really balanced and sporty, but more importantly, it made me feel really good as a driver. It provided a lot of feedback for me. It just, it felt really great, and it wasn't much torque steer at all. Now that it's stage two, more power, more torque, honestly, the car still doesn't give me a lot of torque steer. We're still running stock suspension, and the car still feels really controllable, really balanced. I, I can't complain. I mean, it's to the point to where this car probably has, I'd say around $4,000 in mods in it. And suspension, we haven't really bothered with it because it hasn't really been deemed necessary yet. It still handles really well. And it's still one of my favorite things about this car to this day. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know what y'all think of this top seven video. Let me know if you have a GTI. Let me know what you love about it and what you hate about it because that may be a future video as well. Until then, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one. God, that's an S2K. Oh. Oh, oh and it has a hard top. Oh my God, it matches. Oh my God, that's cool. I freaking need one of those.